Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna start with another story about Martin Fitzwater, who has gotten into a lot of drama after all that thing with Nick Walker. Some of you guys probably don't even know who he is, I mean, he never really won any pro shows, never really placed super high at the pro shows, uh, but he is a former training partner of Brad Wilkin, and he's very young, he's like 25 right now, and he's really massive for his age, and I'm sure one day he's going to be a great pro, but right now he's facing a lot of drama, a lot of problems, he is in trouble after making that comment on uh, his uh, posing video with Guy Sternino, which I'm sure you've seen before. Uh, Nick basically said that Guy's legs are bigger, and uh, Martin replied to, to Nick saying that uh, Nick is going to throw a clot and die. So that was actually like a couple of days after Cedric passed away and so many other bodybuilders uh, this year in the past couple of years. It was definitely in very bad taste. It was not, it's never a moment for this, but especially not at this time. So he faced a lot of heat, a lot of heat, especially from Nick's fans. But I'm guessing not only from his fans, but from just people from the industry, because it was really horrible what he said. After so many comment replies and, as he says, death threats and all kinds of hate messages, he made an apology video, of course. I'm sure he was advised to do so, even if he didn't feel like it. And not only because of the hate comments and messages and everything like that, but also because of his career. Because he has sponsors. And sponsors don't want him to represent them if he's saying this to other bodybuilders. And his main sponsor, his supplement sponsor, was Seth Ferrosi, Seth Ferrosi's company, X and Sledge. If you guys didn't know about this, these were his uh, sponsors. He was recently doing some kind of tour with uh, Keon Pearson, who is also sponsored by X and Sledge. Uh, they were traveling around the world or, or America, I'm not sure. They were guest posing, they were doing these uh, bodybuilding events. As you can see in the description of the photos or the videos or whatever he was posting, also in the description of his profile, there was X and Sledge a code and a, and a tag, but no longer. Apparently Seth didn't really like what Martin said. I'm not sure if, uh, if Seth was just pissed that Martin said this to Nick Walker, or did it simply stop making sense for Axon Sledge to sponsor somebody who is saying this kind of stuff to other bodybuilders? And you know, I, I'm sure it was definitely it was definitely a huge influence that he said this to the most popular open bodybuilder today. By far. It's Nick Walker, yeah. It's not the other guys like in the top five, like Hunter Labrada, Hari Trooper, maybe Hari is in, in Iran, but in the US, not the case. Big Ramy also, maybe very, very popular in Egypt, but not so much in the US, in the entire world, because he's not very active on social media, he just competes. Same thing with Brandon Curry, so it's definitely Nick Walker, the most popular open bodybuilder in the world right now, and Martin went after him, and this is what happens, he lost a major sponsor. Did Martin deserve to lose a sponsor over this? Well, whether Martin meant what he said, and whether Martin is a bad person or not, it doesn't matter. He does deserve to lose this sponsorship because of stupidity. I mean, what was he thinking? Going after Nick Walker like this, saying stuff like this in the midst of what is happening in bodybuilding, really stupid from him, and uh, he lost a major sponsor, and it only makes sense. I mean, just negative comments, hate comments, and whatever he was receiving in his DM, uh, wasn't gonna be enough, you know, he needs to suffer the consequences for saying stuff like this, for being stupid, simply, so hopefully this will be a lesson for him and he won't repeat this kind of stuff in the future, people will forget, and if he doesn't let it affect him mentally too much, I think he has a good chance, a good uh, potential to be uh, a top pro, he does have those uh, genetics in a physical sense. And yeah, I have to use this opportunity to say that maybe he would make better decisions if he was using uh, the product from the old school apps called the Vintage Bright. I mean, this is a great thing for your brain. It's gonna help you stay sharp and more focused throughout the day. It's going to clear some brain fog if you have any after training especially. And if you guys want to support me and my channel, click on the link in the description of this video and use the code EVAN and try this product out. What the hell? What the hell are the plans of Derek Lunsford? Uh, I just don't see... There is no chance! Guys, come on! 
There is no chance that this guy is gonna do 212 again. No way. This looks... Right now he looks like the biggest bodybuilder of all. I don't know, man. He looks, to me, at least, he looks bigger than Nick Walker, than Hunter Labrada, than, than anybody, like, in the top. Even Big Ramy. I don't think Big Ramy is this round and this thick and this blocky. It's insane. And I heard that last year he was really struggling to make the weight in 212, and he was nothing close to this big. I mean, okay, maybe close, but he was not this big. No, he was not this big. He grew so much, and I'm sure he's hiding what he's planning but I'm 99% sure that he's going to do the open. Like, why would he do the 212? He would have to lose, he would have to sacrifice so much muscle. And he already won it. I mean, he, he has a title. As you can see here, he writes uh, 212, Mr. O, blah, blah, blah. But I think he's doing that, uh, first of all, just to, you know, make us stop thinking whether he's going to do the open. And just start remembering that he won the 212. Like, he is the 212 champ. He wants to be the 212 Mr. Olympia champion for, for that one year, and he doesn't want people to think about him as the future open competitor, so I think that's why he's not saying that he's gonna be doing it, but just look at him, <laughs> look at the size of this freaking guy, this is definitely not 212, and I also heard from other bodybuilders, like uh, James Hollinghead, for example, said that he met Tarek in person, and he says that he's not like a small guy, he's not even that short, I mean, short, sure, but he's not like a like a, like a dwarf, you know, like, for example, Sean Clarida is. So he's, you know, he's tall enough to do the open. Like, he can be in the ballpark with uh, William Bonac, Harry Chopin, those guys are pretty short. Nick Walker, too. Nick is not a tall guy. He's really massive, but he's not tall. So I think that's it for Derek. I don't think I don't think there is any reason for him to do 212 again, to suffer, to 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 sacrifice so much muscle, and for what? To be two times 212 Mr. Olympia champ. He already has that title. Go for the open now. And as far as publicity, I think it would help. I think he would be more popular if he did the open. And how well would he do in the open? I think he has a good chance to be. I don't know, I can't say top 6, top 5, because it's really hard, I mean, these guys are really good up there, but, you know, maybe, like, right out of top 6, now we're gonna have Flex Lewis, and who knows how well these guys are gonna improve, like Ian Valier and uh, Justin Rodriguez, who are 7 and 8, so it's gonna be really tough to crack, like, the top, top, uh, if he cracks the top 10, it's a success, come on, guys, it's a success, but this guy, you know, he won the Mr. Olympia in 212, and we've seen the 212 guys winning open shows, so he probably wants to be in top 6 at least. Can he do that? Maybe, maybe. I don't know how much he can improve and how shredded he can come, but I'm sure he can do well, and he's meant for the open now. He's not for 212. He's an open bodybuilder, for sure. Here is an open bodybuilder, Blessing of Oribu. He's gonna be doing Indie Pro in two and a half weeks. Uh, can Derek beat guys like him? For sure. I think he's much better. Uh, as you can see, Blessing is still lacking a lot of muscle in the, in the legs, especially. Uh, now, this photo looks great. It looks improved. Uh, the back looks really good. Like, really good. The back looks so much improved. It looks It started to look a little bit like Ronnie Coleman's back. And guys, uh, I wrote in the comments of this photo here uh, that it would look so much better if this photo was taken uh, from a lower angle, like from the judge's perspective. I don't know who is taking these photos and how come Blessing doesn't know that these photos should be taken from the lower position. I don't know, but apparently they're doing it this way and I'm sure it would look better if they did it the other way. Anyways, Blessing is bringing his absolute best of all time. He was never looking this good. The symmetry is absolutely nuts. And his conditioning is also coming along quite nicely. As he says, George Farah actually pulled cardio out uh, three weeks or, three or four weeks out. So he's eating a lot of food. He's not even doing cardio and he's getting leaner and harder. So whatever they're doing, it's working. And he's staying bigger than last year. Last year, he... He did uh, melt some muscle, for sure, for the conditioning. Uh, this year, I don't know if he's gonna be conditioned enough. I'm sure he will. For two and a half weeks out, this is good. And uh, how well can he place at the Indy Pro? Well, there are a lot of great guys. But last year, he was top three. And I think he's going to be top three again. We're in that top three. I think best case scenario, second. But we'll see in two and a half weeks. All right, next we have another update, a training uh, video of Phil Heath, who looks absolutely enormous right now. 
Uh, I don't know what the hell he's planning, guys. I'm really curious. He looks cartoonish right now, uh, even though he's like in the off season. As far as we know, he's not prepping for any shows. As far as we know, he's actually retired. So for this period in time, look at him. It doesn't make any sense. What makes sense to me, at least, only is that he is gonna be competing sometime this year. I really wish I could tell you more, but nothing has even leaked out. I don't know if he's planning on competing, but it's just common sense. Like, Phil Heath is a smart guy, and I don't think he would, uh, you know, stay this large for no reason. Like, without any specific cause. Like, he is really massive, and having this much muscle is a huge strain on his heart. I mean, his heart needs to pump up all the blood, uh, I mean, for the oxygen, to all his muscles all the time, and it is definitely taking a toll on his health, on his longevity, and Phil just doesn't strike me as a guy who would uh, risk so much for just staying huge, you know? I don't think he's that kind of a guy. I mean, after all that happened, um, so many bodybuilders passed away, I don't think he would risk it, I'm sure he would be scared, and uh, if there is no reason, like competition reason, I think he would downsize, and he is definitely not downsizing, uh, if anything, he is actually getting bigger, every video, every photo we see, he looks bigger and better, so yeah, I'm like 90% positive right now that he's gonna be competing, what do you guys think, tell me in the comment section down below. Yeah, I mentioned Hunter Lobrada before, and uh, this is him right now, so compare him to Derek Lansford, for example. Yeah, I don't know, <laughs> I feel like Derek is bigger, fuller, rounder, but Hunter is in a really good condition. I don't know why is he maintaining this kind of conditioning year around, uh, how he's feeling at this low body fat percent, I don't know. But he is uh, 280 in the morning and uh, 285 even uh, after workout. So that's pretty heavy. Like you guys think Nick Walker is big and he's like 292. So that's very close. They're very similar. But Hunter has a smaller waist. Uh, he has prettier shape. Uh, you know, Nick has some freaky body parts. But overall, I think Hunter is more complete and it makes sense that he beat him, even though Nick is freakier, and right now Hunter is a little bit smaller, a couple of pounds, but even leaner, look at the veins, look at the vascularity in the, in the, in the inner thighs even, I mean, the, he is in a really good shape, and Hunter said that his goal is not to grow any more muscle, he doesn't need to grow any more muscle, what his plan is to just keep the waist tight and improve on some weaknesses. But, you know, mainly, like, work on the details, uh, bag details, and that kind of stuff. Like, he can't really make some crazy improvements if he's not in, like, a large calorie surplus. But can he, really, can he add, like, details? If he's working hard like a maniac, and I'm sure he is training like a maniac, and if he's eating high-quality foods and he's eating, uh, and he's using uh, enough and high-quality gear, uh, if he's well thought out, and I'm sure Hunter is... I'm sure even at this body fat percent and uh, even with maintaining a waist size uh, this small, he can make improvements. And um, next year, I'm sure at the Mr. Olympic, he's going to be better than he was last year. Can he place higher though? That's gonna be tough. You know, if he wants to place higher, he needs to beat Brandon Remy or, or Hardy, and that's gonna be very difficult. Uh, even defending that, that the defending that fourth spot from Nick Walker is gonna be. A big challenge, and now with Flex Lewis and possibly Derek Lansford, maybe on Phil Heath coming in, you know, it's gonna be a really competitive Mr. Olympia, but there is a long time before that. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, guys, give it a thumbs up, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best, and bye-bye.